Hey guys, it's good to be with you as we continue summer in groups. We've heard some awesome things about what's happening in your groups. Your leaders are so excited about everything that's happening. And so we just can't wait to see uh, the way that the Lord continues to work. Um, we know that this is not the summer that we had planned. This is so much different than um, what we kind of had on the calendar. Um, but we know that this is what God had for us. And so we're excited to see what God does through this. And we just ask you, and we remind you of this all the time, you are here for a reason. You are where you are for a reason. And so we just ask you to lean into that. And, and, and as we go through this series on decision-making, we ask that you would learn what God has for you to learn, that you would take time to sit and say, God, whatever you have for me, I'm in, I'm yours, I'm ready to go. And so as we get started tonight, I, I wanna remind you of some things that we talked through last week as we looked um, at an interview with Sam, as we kind of walked through decision-making, we kind of talked and said that there are, are tough decisions that you have to make. There are tough decisions um, in your life. And the reason why they're so hard for us to make sometimes is because we have so many voices speaking into us. And, and, and a lot of us want to please people in our lives. And so as it comes to decision, it gets hard because we know that if we make this decision, it won't go well with that person. Or if we make this decision, it'll go well with that person, but maybe not another person. And so um, as we make decisions, it gets tough uh, in that direction. We also know that when we make decisions, what we say yes to also means that we're saying no to something else. As we walk into decisions, our decisions have consequences. And as we head down one decision, we can't go back and go to something else. And so when we get to these places, it, it gets a little tough. And, and so as we kind of talk through this tonight, we wanna shape what you base your decisions on. Now, I know for me, there are a lot of things that I base my decisions on that probably aren't the right thing to base my decisions on. And so if you're like me, these are probably some of the things on your list. Um, for me, I base my decision on advice. You know, when I get to a decision, I call my parents, I call uh, people around me. I ask my wife, I ask people in my life to kind of help me make a decision. And that's kind of where I base my decision. I also look to my own experience, right? What are some things that have happened to me in the past and how's that going to shape how I make decisions in the future. I also make decisions based on my circumstances, right? I, I kind of look at, man, does this thing make financial sense? Does this thing make sense based on the factors that are, are going on around me? I also make decisions based on, on kind of popular opinion. What's the normal thing to do here? What, what would people around me do if they were given this same uh, situation, they were given the same decision, right? I also make decisions based on our emotions. We make decisions on our emotions all the time. The, the way that we feel, right? If we're angry, we're probably gonna make one decision. If we're sad, we make a decision. If we're happy, we make decisions. And, and all of these things, I want you to hear this, guys. All of these things are good. Like all of these things are uh, things that we probably should have factors in our decision-making but they're not the thing that we should base our decisions on. These are all things, you know, you should probably call your dad before you make a huge decision. You should probably consider your experience. You should probably consider these things, but they're not the thing that we should base our decisions on. And so today we're gonna learn a lesson um, from Moses where he's telling the people something else that they should base their decisions on. And, and that being God's commands, that being what God would say in their lives. And the reason why he's gonna say this is because he cares. He's been leading the people of Israel for a very long time at this point, And he cares deeply for these people and he's walked with them while they've made bad decisions. They've used some of the same basis for their decisions that we use, right? They use advice, right? There's a situation in scripture where we see the people of Israel make a decision based on the advice of 10 spies. Uh, what happens is Moses sends these 12 spies into this land that God is supposed to give them 
They go in, uh, they see that it's everything that God told them that it would be, but they also see that there are people there that are big, that they don't think that they can beat in, in battle. And, and so these 10 spies, 10 of the 12 spies come back and say, hey guys, we cannot go into that land. And they give the people bad advice and they make decisions based on this bad advice. Uh, the people of Israel also make decisions based on their circumstances. They make decisions like us based on their circumstances, where um, in one situation, what happens is uh, Moses goes away for 40 days to spend time with the Lord. He gets the 10 commandments in this moment. And what happens is the people of Israel, uh, like they, they realize that Moses has been gone for a long time. And because of their circumstances, what they do is they start to go and worship this golden calf because of their circumstances are a little bit odd, their circumstances are a little different. They turn their back on God and they make a decision to worship a cow It is what happens. And so they make decisions based on bad circumstances. They also make decisions based on their emotions over and over again, fear drives them. And so Moses is gonna stop them in the book of Deuteronomy and say, hey guys, look, we've made some bad decisions in the past. We've turned to some things that we should not turn to. And I want better for you. I want good for you. I want what's right for you. I want you to succeed in what you do. And so I'm going to tell you to make decisions based on something else. And what he puts forward for them is everything that God has told him, he's gonna put before them and say, hey, make your decisions based on God's commands. Now, I know that listening to this, we probably have a couple of uh, 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 objections to listening to God's commands. We have a couple of people who are saying, ah, I don't want to listen to God's commands. There's probably a couple different reasons for that. Some of you, uh, if you're like me, some of us have a problem with listening to God's commands because we have a problem listening to anybody's commands. We don't like people telling us what to do. We have a little bit of an authority issue. And so when it comes when it comes to obedience, when it comes to God's commands, when it comes to making decisions based on somebody else's opinion, all of us kind of have this thing in our heart where we're like, who are you to tell me what to do? And so as we kind of talk through this, I, I want to speak to you and I want to show you why God has the authority, why he has this position where he's able to speak into our lives. And, and then others of us, we hear, hey, listen to God's commands. And, and it's not God that we have a problem with. It, it's this idea that we have to do work in listening to somebody else. And, and what we found in the Bible is, is something Sometimes the stories that we hear from the Bible are, are somewhat irrelevant for our lives. We get somewhat bored with what we hear in scripture. And so it's not God that we have a problem with. We just don't wanna do the work to actually hear what God has to say in our lives. And so what I wanna do for you is I wanna show you why this book, why what God has for us is so relevant for our lives. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and flip with me over to Deuteronomy 6. Uh, we're gonna read a couple of verses and, and, and I'm gonna show you these things and then we're gonna start to learn how to make decisions based on them, all right? Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse one is gonna say this. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me, Moses, to teach you. You must obey them in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and your grandchildren must fear the Lord your God, as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy long life. So, so what I wanna do first is I wanna talk to this idea that authority isn't for me. I, I, I don't want people speaking into my life. It's, it's not a God thing. It's just anybody speaking into my life I don't like. People around me have abused authority in my life. Maybe uh, for you, that's some of your statements. Um, I wanna kind of speak into why God gives us these commands. I, I wanna say today that God commands because he cares. As you see this, he, you know, Moses is gonna lay out, you must obey, you must fear. But then he says, you, if you obey, you will enjoy. So a, a lot of times we don't like authority because we think that people in our lives are, are, are using us, that they're giving us 
God's commands, not based on our good, but based on their good. That if we do what they say, it'll go good for them. And and what we say is, man, I'm not gonna listen to you because I don't think you have my best interest at heart. But that's not who God is. When we see this passage, the reason why God's telling these people to obey, the reason why he's inviting them into these commands is because he cares for them. It's for their good so that they would enjoy everything that God has for them. And so as God gives you and I guidelines on how to live our life, what he's doing there is he's not trying to frustrate us. He's not trying to make us miserable. He's not setting those things in our lives for his good. He's setting them in our lives for our good. Because ultimately, if we live our lives according to his commands, our lives go better. We, we, we kind of say this all the time that God is the author of life, the author and perfecter uh, of life. And, and what that kind of speaks into is this idea that God created life, that he wrote the book of life, that he wrote everything that's happening. And so the reason why he has the power to speak into your life, the reason why he has the power to tell you what to do is because he designed life. And so he gets to tell us how it works best. And so God commands first and foremost, because he cares. Let's look at verse number three. It says, listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Again, obey. Then all will go well with you. And you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors promised you. So this moment, what we're getting at here in scripture has been a long time coming. All the way back in Genesis 12, we see God make Abraham this promise that, hey, you're going to be the father of many nations. You're going to have a land that I'm going to provide for you. And God is faithfully bringing Abraham to this moment. He's bringing his people to this moment where he's able to have this nation and they're able to possess this land. This is something that has been a long time coming. And God has faithfully orchestrated this the whole time. So I want to speak to the person who kind of thinks that the Bible is irrelevant to their lives or maybe doesn't have anything to say to them particularly. Look guys, God commands because he's in control. God commands because he is in control. This is a moment that has been working throughout history for all time because God is in control of every single moment of every single day of your life. There's not a moment that God steps off the throne of the universe where he says, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to step out for a minute. That's not what God does. He is in control at every single moment. And so this book, the Bible is relevant to your life because He is in control. He's the one's writing it for your life. And so as we look at God's control, uh, as we look at his commands, he commands because he is in control. Now, what I want to do now is I want to start to put these commands into practice for our lives. Verse four says, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. So if it's true that God commands because he cares and God commands because he's in control. There's some ways that we need to respond to these things in our life. If we're gonna make decisions based on his commands, we've gotta respond in some certain ways. The first way that I would say is that you have to trust God. This verse says you have to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and all of your strength. In other words, there's no divided loyalty. Now, when we say trust God, I think that that's kind of a a churchy thing to say. That's kind of a a thing that, you know, of course the pastor is saying trust God. Um, But I want to kind of speak into how that actually plays out in your life. I I think that a lot of us would say, yeah, I trust God. But when it comes down to our lives, we make decisions based on something else. And, And so what I would say about trust in God is if you really trust God, if you actually walk in such a way that you trust God, a lot of the bad decisions that you make in your life, a lot of the sin that you make in your life is going to be taken away. You see, sin stems from us not trusting God. That's where sin originates from. If, if you look at Eve in the Garden of Eden, the first sin that's ever committed, what happens is the serpent comes to her and says, hey, did God really really say? No, no, no. 
God's not really gonna kill you. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be like God. And what happens in that moment is Eve starts to distrust God because there's some divided loyalty, because she starts to believe that God's holding back for her, from her, she makes a bad decision. And all of our bad decisions stem from this place where we don't trust God, where we say, I don't know if I can trust God. I don't know if he has what's good for me. I don't know if he has what's best for, our, for my life. And so all of a sudden we start to look in a different direction. We start to look for other things other than him in our lives. And so I would say if we are going to actually live out God's commands, if we're actually going to live out the Bible, then ultimately we have to come to this place where we trust God, where we don't know what the final result's gonna be, where we don't know what's going on, what his end goal is, but whatever he tells us to do, we say yes. We, we go ahead and lay down and surrender and say, God, whatever you have for me, I'm in. I, I'm here for you. And so we have to come to this place where we trust God. And so um, it's going to continue in verse number six and say, and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on your doorposts of your house and your gates. And so he's gonna talk about God's commands and he's gonna say, hey, if you trust God, what this is gonna look like in your life is you're gonna put scripture everywhere. You're going to talk about it to your children. You're going to meditate it on it day and night. You're going to put it, you know, he's going to be kind of a little adamant about this and say, hey, tie it to your arms, put it on your forehead, put it everywhere that you can see. And the reason why is because what you surround yourself with is going to naturally start to come out of you. I have this bad habit um, sometimes where when I talk on the phone to someone, I, I immediately start to talk like that person. Like, like when Andy Langston calls me on the phone, I, I immediately start to have this Southern drawl come out of my mouth and it's, hey buddy, what you do? You know, like I start to talk like Andy Langston, right? Or, or if one of my high school buddies calls me, like I automatically go into, yeah, bro. You know, I go into that mode and, and it's this annoying thing. I don't know why I do it, but it kind of proves this point that whoever, I allow to speak into my life, whatever I put into my life is naturally going to come out of my life. And the same is true for you. The same is true for me. This is what Moses is tapping into here. He's kind of getting at that if you put scripture around your life, if you put God's commands around your life, all of a sudden you're going to start to live according to God's commands. And so the second thing that I would say is if we're going to actually start to live out these things, we have to learn his commands. Now I want to get practical for a second because I think we say this quite a bit and we talk about quiet times and we talk about what it looks like to do that a bit, but we don't actually go into what that should actually look like in your lives. And so the first thing that I would say that if you're actually going to live this thing out, I would say read scripture. You need to read scripture. And if you're like me, sometimes this requires you to just sit down and do it. Like, like I have good intentions about reading scripture. I, you know, I, I set out on goals and I, I tell myself I'm going to do it. But, but there comes a moment where I actually have to sit down and say, today I'm going to be disciplined and I'm going to do this. And one of the ways that helps me do that is if I will get a plan on my Bible app and I'll just say, hey, I'm gonna go through this. This appeals to me. I need help with whatever this is. You know, if it's anger, you look up a plan based on whatever that is and start to actually do it. And it'll map out, hey, this day you need to read this. This day you need to read this. And if you have a plan, then you're much more likely to succeed as you read scripture. I would also say this. When you go through uh, kind of making a quiet time for yourself, you need to have a set time and a set place to meet with God face to face. You need to have a set time and a set place to meet with God face to face. And the reason why I would say that, the reason why I, I call you to kind of that routine is because when you have a routine, it's much more easy to actually get it done, actually 
get that done. And so as we kind of talk through that, the last thing that I would say is that, you know, and this is not uh, scripture, this is kind of me just stepping into advice. I would say that you need to probably do that in the morning because ultimately what happens is as you read scripture, it shapes your day. And and so I know a lot of people, a lot of really awesome people who will read their Bible at night and and they're holy, they're great, they're awesome. Um, But I would say for me, it's always been helpful to read in the morning because I'm more more likely to walk according to what I've read if I read in the morning. And so uh, read scripture. Secondly, I'd say meditate on scripture. If you're going to learn God's commands, you need to meditate on scripture. Joshua 1.8, uh, God's giving Joshua all this advice about how to actually lead. And God says, hey, you should study this scripture constantly. You should read this book different than any other book that you read. You should meditate on it day and night, because if you do, it'll look different. Look guys, when it comes to scripture, we're not reading uh, the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Like it's different than anything else that you read in your lives. You need to read this like you're actually trying to live it, like you're actually trying to get it into your guts, that you're actually trying to walk this thing out. And so as we kind of talk about here at the church, there's kind of a method that we put forward to kind of help you read scripture um, as you follow your plan. Here's what I would say. Uh, There's probably going to be something that sticks out to you a little bit more than uh, something else. And so we use the SOAP method. And what that that looks like is is you find that scripture, that's the S in SOAP. You find that scripture that kind of speaks to you maybe a little bit more and and you kind of focus on on that one scripture. And and then you observe what's going on. That's the O in SOAP. What's going on in this passage? Not what does this mean to me, but what is the author trying to get at when it comes to this? What's, what are they speaking to? Who is their audience? What are they trying to say to them? And then what you do is you apply that. You, you try to take that and say, all right, that's what it meant 2,000 years ago. What's it mean to my life today? How can I actually put this into practice? Maybe it's, I, I need to be a little more honest in, in the way that I walk. Maybe it's, I need to be more humble, whatever that looks like in application to you. And, and then you pray, God, God, I need to be more humble. Would you make me more humble? And, and that's the soap method. And that's how we uh, kind of meditate on scripture. Lastly, I would say, Memorize scripture. If you're going to learn God's commands, you need to memorize scripture. Psalms 119 verse 11 will say, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is so important that we take God's word and we hide it in our hearts because there are going to be moments where we don't have time to ponder a decision, where we don't have time or we have to make a decision in the moment. And we need scripture to pull on so that we're able to fight off some temptation. Um, I'll say this uh, for my life. There's a couple apps that I use to help me memorize scripture. Um, The Verses app um, on your Apple store, you can go and get that. I think it costs like $3, but so worth it to memorize scripture. Um, And Fighter Verse is another one that I use. Use that because it's able to help you fight. Lastly, I'd say this, guys, um, as we talk about this, I want to kind of give you the end of the story of Deuteronomy. Obviously, as you continue throughout the Bible, what you see is the people of Israel do not take Moses' advice, that, that, that they don't live according to God's commands, that there is some disconnect between the application of God's commands and the hearing of God's commands. And so uh, for us, the same is going to be true in our lives. There are going to be days that you hear God's scripture, that you hear God's word, and, and you're just not able to live it out. And, and I would call you to live in obedience. And the way that you do that is you rely on the Holy Spirit's power, that you go to God and you say, God, I I know I'm seeing in scripture over and over again that I'm falling short, that I'm not living up to what you're calling me to. I need your power in my life, the same power that raised Christ from the dead to kill whatever sin is going on in my life. And when you do this, you're going to start to make decisions based on who God is. As we close, I would just encourage you to look at some of these things, maybe look at your own life, look at your own heart and say, man, where do I struggle to put God's commands into practice in my life? Is it because of maybe an authority issue in my life? Maybe it's, I don't trust God. 
Uh, maybe it's, it's an issue of, man, I, I trust God. I just get bored with the Bible. Could I just encourage you today as we go into our groups to talk through some of these things and allow God to pull them out. Maybe you need to make a decision today to say, hey, I'm gonna trust God. No matter what it looks like, I'm going to trust God and I'm gonna walk in obedience for whatever he has for me. Or, or maybe today you need to kind of resolve in your heart, hey, I'm gonna actually start getting into this scripture. I'm gonna start putting it into my life and see how it plays a part in who I am. Let me pray for us and then we will head into our groups. Father God, we thank you for each and every one of these students. We thank you that you care about them. That ultimately the reason why you give us these commands, the reason why you guide us the way that you do is because you want what's best for these students. God, we can see that clearly on the cross. Lord, you demonstrated your love for us and that while we were still sinners, you died for us. So God, I pray that we would settle once and for all, that we trust you and that we want you. We love you and we ask you this in your name, amen.